Okay, so let's define the word gimmick. As you see here on screen, it says a trick or device intended to attract attention, publicity, or business. Um, oh, number two, a night out with friends. Well, I think number one applies more for this lesson and what you're about to see that's nothing but a gimmick okay and listen the truth does not need any gimmicks let me bring out the scripture here if you have to use gimmicks within your ministry then you really don't have the truth this is the book of first Corinthians 5 and 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast. And this thing of ours is likened unto a feast. This ministry that we're involved in is likened unto a feast. Actually, it's a Passover feast. Now, remember the first Passover, what was happening. The Egyptians were being judged while the Israelites were being protected. Right? Right? As a matter of fact, the term Passover meant the angel of death passed over the Israelites, did not judge them, but, he, but the angel of death passed over the Israelites right on to the Egyptians and judged them. That's the very meaning of the term Passover. So it says, so getting this knowledge, getting this truth, and keeping it all the way to the end will ensure that the angel of death, which is Yahweh Shai, and the angels that are coming with him, that the angel of death and the other angels will pass over us because we have this knowledge, we have this truth, and pass on to the wicked and bring destruction, just like what happened back in Egypt, right? As a matter of fact, to back that up, let's get Psalms 91, where it says, "You because we have made the heavy, we have made the heavenly father and his only begotten son our refuge. Well, let's start the first verse. Psalm 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. That's this knowledge, this truth. And it's a secret because it's not revealed to everybody. Only a, a precious elect few. So that makes it a secret. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's us. We are abiding under the, the Lord's protection. That's what it means, the shadow of the Almighty, right? I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power in him will I trust, right? Because this knowledge teaches us about the Lord and his only begotten son. We get to know the Lord and his only begotten son by this knowledge, by this truth, right? Surely he will deliver or surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. What is that? That is the nuclear destruction. That's the noisome pestilence. What's the snare of the fowler? The plans that the so-called white man is setting right now, even as I speak, to bring in the so-called New World Order. That's the snare. Another word for snare is trap. We're being trapped. We're being trapped into accepting the coming so-called New World Order of Esau. He's going to make it where every avenue you turn to in his kingdom, you have to sell out to the so-called New World Order. But we're not going to sell out because we're members of the elect. The Heavenly Father has a protection for us. But those that are not under the umbrella of the Heavenly Father's protection, which is this knowledge, they're going to have to give in to Esau, right? Or die. So that is the snare of the fowler. Esau is the fowler, and his snares are everything that is leading to what he wants to bring, which is a new world order, which is the worship of Satan, basically, right? So he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Now you know what that means. And from the noisome pestilence, which is the nuclear destruction, which is going to destroy his kingdom bring an end to it, right? He shall cover thee with feathers or with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. That's a metaphor for the chariots. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Uh, thou thou shall not, and what is a shield and buckler? It's protection in war, right? Thou shall not be afraid for, for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day again, the nuclear destruction nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. That's the highest point of this man's kingdom, the destruction, right? A thousand shall fall at thy side. By what? By, radi by radiation? 
nuclear radiation, and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, right? Even in the midst of that, we will be delivered. That is our faith, right? Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. What's going to be the reward of the wicked? Which is really Esau. What's going to be the reward? Destruction. Destruction by the nuclear missiles and the chariots. That's going to be Esau's reward for his wicked kingdom, right? Because thou has made the Lord, which is my refutation, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. So that's powerful. That's I read all those verses to get to this verse, Psalm 91 and 9, because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, who is speaking here, David, even the most high, thy habitation. So because we have made this knowledge, this truth, our habitation, meaning all we thought about was this knowledge, this truth. We gave our whole energy to this knowledge, this truth. We gave our whole mind to this knowledge, this truth. Again, that's all we thought about. That's all we wanted to do was make videos and learn more and get more and more understanding. And again, do videos. We made this knowledge, this truth, our habitation. Because we have done that, let's read the next verse. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Why? Because we made this knowledge our refuge. All right? We made this knowledge our habitation. In other words, this is all we thought about. We lived for this knowledge, this truth, this understanding. So because we did that, no evil will come near us. Like it says here, Neither shall any plague come nigh, dwe nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee. There you go. To keep thee in all thy ways, they shall bear thee up in their hands, least thou, sh least thou dash thy foot against a stone. There you go. <laughs> all right. So because we have done that, no evil will come near us. Now, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, another word for malice would be a gimmick. Okay, a gimmick, all right? And this is what you're about to see. What you're about to see here is nothing but a gimmick from the, I got to say from the, well, I don't know. As of late, all kind of these different, it's like all these different Israelite groups are fighting with each other to become the lowest hanging fruit. Okay, but I, I have to say the church that's number one has got to be ISUPK. You want to talk about an apostate church? You want to talk about a synagogue of Satan? <laughs> That's that group, man, the, I, the ISUPK, man. That's got to be the lowest fruit in Israel. Check this out, man. And remember the word gimmicks. ISUPK, man, home of the truth. It is the place where the spirit of the Most High Christ dwells. The Most High Christ dwells. The Most High he said it is the spirit where the Most High Christ dwells. I agree with him. Certainly not the spirit where you hold... <laughs> Hey, the phone at the jam on that one. Certainly not the spirit where Yahweh should be our shy dwells. But yes, it is the spirit where the Most High and Christ dwells. Yes, absolutely. He at least he got that right. Whatever you know, what he just said there. Christ dwells. What is it? Twenty second. Yeah, we real about this shit, man. Like y'all said, what we really in the streets, right? It's heavy this shit. Cause we need all them niggas out there who say they really want to be down with some shit. This is shit to live. So what you're looking at is a gimmick, man. Okay, you got all the tents there. You got all these dudes wearing their, their Sunday best, <laughs> right? And and just about what you're about to hear, the the the, the conversation just pure stupidity, okay? Lowest hanging fruit, all right? Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, as it is written, a fool may be known by his words, okay? I mean, it's hard to believe that you have members that may be of the elect among this group, okay? Because <laughs> this got to be the Lord's hanging fruit on on the tree in Israel, man. Absolutely, man. Everybody else talk making, man. You dying for some bullshit. Right. This is shit we going to real soldiers stand up for and fall in line and do this shit the right way, man. Right. According to the law. You did. Right. And if you only going to find that shit in the ISUPK. Right. Everybody According to the law. There, there's another guy talking about the law. Like it says in First Timothy. Let's get that. 
1 Timothy 1 and 7. Here's another guy talking about the law, but doesn't understand what the hell he's talking about. Let's read it. 1 Timothy 1 and 6. It says, For or from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. And that's that's what you heard. Excuse me. That's what you heard. Vain jangling. A lot of vain jangling. Just psychobabble. You know? <laughs> Vain jangling, psycho babble, okay, mishmash, mushmouth talk, okay. Now let's get to the part of the law. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor where they affirm. There you go. And you just saw another example. A good example is Sakari. They're all about the law, this and the law that. And they don't understand what the hell they're talking about concerning the law. Anyway, let's move on. There's wasting your goddamn time. Right. It looked good, but he ain't. So you know you got your Hollywood Israelites complete with the Ray Bans, the, the shades, you know, all the posing and shit, the studs all all over the place, you know, the karate geese made into garments, you know, looking like members of Earth, Wind, and Fire, or. Uh, the group, uh, what's that group? Um, Ohio players, you know, the throwback to them old 70s groups, you know, Jake's 70s groups where they're wearing all the studs and leather and all that. There you go, you know. <laughs> Let's move on. Forget about the sackcloth, which the scriptures say we would wear pursuant to Revelation, uh, what is that? Revelation, the 14th chapter, they shall prophesy wearing what sackcloth now. When you read sackcloth, the word, the Greek word there is sakos, which means a garment worn by penitents, mourners, and that's what we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be uh, in, in party mode. The scriptures say the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart, the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. That's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the house of mirth, which is, mirth is another word for joy. You know, party, party, party. You know, this other group, uh, ISU, um, IUIC, they, they had that one video. It's an Israelite party. It's a, the majority is low-hanging fruit that call themselves Israelites. That's what they think this knowledge is all about. One big party. They don't see the gravity of this truth. They don't see the sufferings that our, the, our Lord went through, the humiliation. You know, they don't even ponder on that. They don't even think about that. To them, that's not what this truth represents. What this truth represents is party, having fun, you know, getting a woman or women, you know, the so-called finer things in life. <laughs> that's, that's what they think this knowledge is all about. And they're totally out of the spirit. All right. The spirit of Yahweh Bar Shem is simply not dealing with these guys, not dwelling with these guys. It like, it like a nice bitch, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But she can't cook, yeah. she can't clean, yeah. she can't... Yeah, the analogy this guy's using. Like a nice bitch, but she can't cook, she can't clean. Like I said, mishmash talk. Mushmouth talk. All right? Psychobabble. Okay? Nothing edifying. Nothing that you can really get some good spiritual content from. Okay? And a lot of, a lot of you Israelites, you're just fine with that. You really are. That's why you got to be destroyed. There's no, there's no other answer. You just got to be destroyed. You just got to be wasted. Then you'll come back in the kingdom in your right mind, and then you'll be good. But for now, you just got to go. You're an eyesore, and you got to go. Okay? There's this, this no debate. You just got to go. Okay? You just got to be exterminated. Okay? You got to go. You'll come back in the kingdom in your right mind. You'll be born through the elect that have some kind of sense that'll make it and you'll come through their loins. Okay, that's how this thing works. Do shit, yeah. but look good. Yeah. Give me a regular bitch. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're going to do all of that. Right. That's you. Yeah, that, that is so profound what he just said. That is so deep. We can, we, can learn, we can glean and learn so much from what he just said. Okay, let's move on. Okay, man, we're going to do all of it and make it look good. That's right, bitch. And the thing is, the Heavenly Father himself, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai, brought these clowns in. That's the thing, because it goes back to that parable. Let me bring that on screen here. 
Mm-hmm. And you might say, well, uh, bars hating on. No, I'm not hating. I'm telling you, I'm not hating on these. I don't even know these guys to be hating, hating these dudes. What I do hate is the folly that's coming from them because I recognize it. I know that's not the spirit of Yahweh Bar Shimei Shai. Actually, what I'm doing is love. I'm trying to warn those that will listen. This is not the way to be. You don't want to be like that. The example that I'm showing you. Okay, that is not the example that our Lord set, that the Apostle Paul set, that the disciples, which became the apostles, set. That's not the example. Okay, far from it, man. And what is that? That's supposed to be a Passover? Come on, man. A Passover is supposed to be a solemn assembly. What the hell is solemn about what you're what you watching there? With these, with these guys, they got their women there and, and, and they, they're just babbling. You know, everybody is, is in look, what looked like a party spirit. Yahushua's Passover wasn't like that. That was a solemn occasion. Yahushua said on the night of the Passover, he said his, his, uh, his uh, spirit is uh, sorrowful unto death. That's what he said. Okay, so <laughs> you can't tell me that that is the spirit of Yahweh Shimei Shai. Okay, unto a net. There it is right here. Matthew 13 and 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven, which is this knowledge, this truth, is like unto a net. That's the Bible. All right, and the bait is this truth, right, that comes from the Bible. That was cast into the sea. The sea represents the people. All of the Israelites that heard this word and that got hooked up by the bait, which is this knowledge, this truth coming from the Bible, right? That was cast into the sea and gathered, <laughs> and gathered every kind, every kind, the good kind as well as the bad kind, okay? So that's why you have these low-hanging fruit. Now, at the beginning, I couldn't understand that. I couldn't understand why would the Lord bring a, a degenerate into this truth, a goofball into this truth, a madman into this truth, a bug out into this truth. Why would the Lord do that? This is supposed to be precious, but that's just it. By the Lord doing that, he's showing just how precious the truth is for those that really have it, for those that are not goofballs and not bug outs, those that have actual sense, common sense, those that have a sound mind, because as you can clearly see, not every Israelite that claims he's an Israelite in this thing of ours has a sound mind. A lot of these guys are bugged out. Okay, a lot of these guys got mental issues. And I always say this knowledge, this truth, it makes the best or the worst out of you. Okay? <laughs> anyway, let's keep reading. It says, <laughs> which when it was full, and we're getting to the point when it's going to be full, we're getting to the point when Yahweh Shai is coming back, they drew to shore, right, and sat down. And that's going to happen when Yahweh Shai comes with those chariots to sever the wicked from the just, to sever his elect from the rest of the Israelites, right? That's what it means when it was full. They drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels. The good is going to go into the vessels. What are the vessels? That's a metaphor for the chariots. This is going to happen during the time of deliverance. But cast the bad away. There you go. So the, what is the point here? The point is you have the good as well as the bad in this thing of ours. So now I get it. Now I understand why you're going to have all these bug outs and these degenerates and these, these uh, guys that really belong in the asylum, these lunatics being brought into this thing of ours, being brought into this truth. And this truth makes them even more of a lunatic. They were a lunatic to begin with, but <laughs> the Lord brought them into this truth and they became twofold a, lu a lunatic. Like it says, in the scripture, they became twofold a child of hell. Okay, now I understand that now. The Lord brought both kinds. Okay, because number one, he's going to bring judgment on the lunatics. The bad kind, he's going to bring judgment on them. And he's going to use them to show why he must be feared. I'm talking about Yahweh Bar Shem Shai. So now I get it. Okay, I'm not perplexed by the why the Lord would bring undesirables, the unwanted, into the truth. Okay, so... Um, let me see. Let's go back to the video. See some more of this madness. Yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Top TV in this and the thing is, what's deep about it, some of these guys could uh, repent. 
They're not above repenting, but the doors of, you know, the time of repenting and the doors are slowly shutting. And once those doors shut, this is when the elect are fully sealed. All hell is going to break loose. And the Lord is going to make examples of clowns like what you see in here. If they don't repent, if they don't come back in their right mind. Because for now, they're gone. Let's bring in Jeremiah, uh, what is that, 6? 6, 6 and 30. You're looking at individuals that are gone. Now, they ain't going. They're already gone. Okay? <laughs> Jeremiah 6 and um, 6 and 30. Reprobate silver shall men call them. Those are men of the Lord that understand. They look at guys like what I'm showing you and call them reprobates. What is a reprobate? That's a mind void of judgment. Okay? Reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord have rejected them. That's why they act the way they do. They've been rejected. Let's, let's listen. To <laughs> The ISUPK, uh -huh. goddammit. The ISUPK, uh -huh. goddammit. Uh -huh. There you go, with the silly women. These, these silly women, let's bring that in. <laughs> scriptures don't lie, man. Okay. The scriptures do not lie. This is the book of 2 Timothy. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul warned Timothy about what we're seeing. 2 Timothy 3 and 1, this know also that in the last days, are we not in the last days? There you go. Perilous times shall come. We're in perilous times right now. Another word for perilous means dangerous. We're in very dangerous times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, and we've seen that now. You know, with all this, this is the selfie generation. Everybody taking selfies, everybody got social media, taking all kinds of pictures and parading themselves, and especially the women, okay? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, even in the truth. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Who are the parents? Those are the ones that taught you the truth. They're your spiritual parents. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, right? Okay, we see, we've seen plenty of examples, you know, of that. Guys come in the truth, they learn, and then they turn against their teachers. They're unthank unthankful, they're unholy. Okay, they are, they are disobedient to parents, like it says here. Without natural affection, truce bakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, trady, heady, high-minders, or high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of the Father. There you go. Lovers of pleasure. Now, you just seen the example. You know, we saw an example of Sakari on the Passover. Where, where are they? They're in a club. The phone had to chime on that one. They're in a club uh, pretty much uh, enjoying themselves. On what is supposed to be a solemn occasion, the Passover, they're in a club, and then they, then you might say, "Well, we repented for it. who did who the hell did they repent to? They don't believe really believe in the Yahweh Shai, so who did they repent to? They didn't repent, man. They're just sorry they got caught. Okay, there's a big difference. It says having a form of godliness, but denying the power there from such turn away. Now here it comes. Having a form of godliness, like if we watch the video, look, look, you know the woman. The women are uh, the women are dressed as if they, as if they were hanging with uh, uh, the day before they were hanging with Sarah, or Rebecca, or Judith, <laughs> and then the men are dressed like what? Like they just came off the biblical battlefield, you know? They were hanging out with so uh, King David and Joab and Solomon, you know? <laughs> I tell you, man, never a dull moment with this nation. It says, for of, these, of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. There you go. Silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Can't get around it. Okay? Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There you go. Most I'm here, I'm doing. I'm making sure everybody got the... These women are parrots, man. Most I let them just... Probably want a cracker. These women ain't nothing but parrots, man. They just mimic what they see or hear. Okay, they don't know what the hell's going on. Anyway, let's move on. They got their water and they got their grape juice. Why do you want to... This guy should do stand-up comedy, man. They got their water and they got their grape juice. What? <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Thing in the world when you ain't getting no women like that. Right. You know what I mean? The women don't like you. Right. So this is what this knowledge is about. That's the high point of this knowledge. To get <laughs> to get a woman, mind you, a woman that's been that's been passed around like a marijuana joint. All right. She done laid down with all kind of men. <clears throat> but this is the high point of this knowledge. To get a woman. Right? That's laid down for all kind of men. Certainly not a virgin, because you ain't gonna find that. You know, you're quicker to find a, a leprechaun breakdancing, you know, <laughs> with a bowl of lucky charms, <laughs> then you find a virgin, man. All right, it's just not going to happen, okay? But that is the high point of this knowledge, according to this, this guy right here, with his stellar breakdown, okay? <laughs> These guys make you laugh. These things, right. you're sitting on the you sitting on the couch all day. You don't got a job, right. so you might as well come into the. Truck. I'm telling you, this guy should do stand up comedy, man. This dude should do stand up comedy, man. He'd be right up there with uh, what's that short guy? Um, the hell is his name? Uh, I forgot his name. He'd be right up there with that guy. Okay, <laughs> he's been in a few movies. You know, it'd be right up there with Dave Chappelle. I remember him, Dave Chappelle. Okay. <laughs> hey, if you brothers know who I'm talking about, put it in the comment section. All right. You can get some jobs where you can get a girl. All right. You heard him. You might as well come into the truth. <laughs> you can get some jobs and you can get some girls. This is it got on all the regard. You. And that is the high point of this knowledge, brothers and your few sisters. That's the high point of this knowledge. You come in and you get a woman and then you get a, you get you get some jobs and you get a girl. <laughs> you see? This is why Yahweh Shemiah Shai is bringing judgment. First Peter 4 and 17. There's a scripture where it says even a foolish thought is sin with the Heavenly Father. Not only are these foolish thoughts, these are, this is foolish talk. This is talk with no sense. This is babble, psychobabble. Okay? It has really has no place in this knowledge and this truth. Our forefathers, when they talked, when they had discourse, when they when they had conversations, they were enlightening conversations. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, our forefathers, when they had conversations, it was enlightening. All right? It was no foolish talk. Okay. Let's move on. Got on all the stuff. It looked like a man of the Lord. <laughs> Got all types of garments. Nigga say you sit on the couch, your feet stink, you ain't got no job. Might well come into the troop, you can get some jobs, you can get some girls. <laughs> these, these these guys are weird, man. This is like these low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit. Okay? These are not look, like the guy I'm looking at, am I saying he can't repent? No, I'm not saying that. He could repent. Maybe he could see this video and say, you know what, let me straighten up. But then nine times out of ten, it ain't gonna happen. These are just low-hanging fruit that are begging for destruction. And that's exactly what they're going to get if they don't repent. That's exactly what they're going to get. They're going to be destroyed. Then they're going to come back in the kingdom. Then they're going to be in their right mind. All right? Then there won't be no more psycho Bible. But for now, pfft, come on, man. Went down to the prison when they let people out <laughs> and recruited them. These dudes are nothing but just carnal brutes. But this, keep yeah, listening, brutes. though. Let's go back a little. They are brutes. That's a good word the brother used, brutes. Okay, the scriptures speak about the brutes. Okay. The scriptures speak about the brutes. Okay. I know the word brutish is in there. That's a good one. Psalm 94 and 8. Understand ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? There you go. Uh, Proverbs 12 and 1. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. I don't have to tell you, they, they look like individuals that hate reproof. All right, let's go to Jude. We know it's in the book of Jude. All right, Jude, the first chapter. Recently, some information came out about 
why Jude, which was the biological brother of Yahweh Shai, why he wrote this book, the book of Jude. Okay, and it's because there was a lot of apostasy churches being being set up. And the ISUPK is definitely an apostasy church. No doubt about it, man. Jude 1 and 4, for there certain men crept in unawares who were before of all ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness, look that word up, and denying the only Lord power and Lord Yahweh Shai. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how the Lord how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believed not in the angels which kept their first estate, but left their own habitations. And those angels are talking about us. All right, we're nothing but really angels in these bodies, in these corrupt chains, these corrupt bodies. It's just like what the Apostle Paul said about his body. He said, I know that within my body dwelleth no good thing. So there you go. This is why it says uh, everlasting chains, right? We're being held back under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And that's talking about us. We're going to be judged in the great day. You know, as it is written, every man shall receive their reward, whether if they've done good or whether if they've done evil. Now, we know if we stay in this truth all the way to the end, our reward will be favorable. We're actually going to get a crown. You know, Ezra saw that in the vision. He saw uh, Yahweh Shai putting crowns on the heads of the men that stood so stiffly for the word that def that defended the gospel of Yahweh Shai all the way to the end. Okay, that's that's going to be our reward, a crown. Even the Apostle Paul told Timothy that. He said, henceforth I know that I have finished my course. He is about to be put to death, right? So in his letter to Timothy, he said, look, I, I know I've finished my course. Henceforth I know that there is a crown laid up for me that I will receive the day that the Lord comes back. <laughs> the Apostle Paul said that. All right, so read on. It says, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignities, that's your low-hanging fruit, all right? But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, brute or brutes, they're brute beasts. So they're in the truth, they're in the knowledge, you're seeing them, they're brute beasts. Okay, let's look up that word, brute. I didn't plan to make this video that long, but Hey, that's how the spirit works sometimes. Let's look at the word brute. Here's the Greek. Strong's G 249, oligos, oligos. So the Greek word is oligos, and it says destitute of reason. You can't reason with these guys. All right, you can't reason with them. They're not going to change. They're destined to be destroyed. As it is written, made to be destroyed. I think that's in the same book we're reading, Jude. So you can't reason with them. They're like the, you know, like, <laughs> like uh, what's his name? Tola, Tol, uh, Sarah Connor, uh, Reese in the movie Terminator. Terminator, the first one, the very first one. He said, look, that Terminator is out there. It can be reasoned with. It can be bargained with. It feels no pain. It has no remorse. That's these guys, man. These guys are brutes. You can't reason with them. They are brutes that are about to be terminated. I'm talking about these false Israelites that have been brought into this thing. Okay? This is, this is their judgment, to be brought into this thing so the Heavenly Father can turn around and judge them. And you cannot reason with them. Okay? You just got to leave them alone. You got to mock them, like it says in Mark. Is that Mark, by the way? Mark 16, I think. Mock them which cause division and avoid them. So you mock them. This is why, this is what I'm doing. I'm mocking them. And I'm enlightening you brothers and you few sisters that watch these videos to those kind. That spurious kind. Look the word spurious up. Those dudes are indeed spurious. Okay? They're fugazi. They're not the right thing. Okay? They're fake. They're phony. Okay? <laughs> what more what more adjective should I use? Destitute of reason, contrary to reason, absurd, they're absurd. And they're so easy to spot. Okay. There you go. So but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they not what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things, they corrupt themselves. There you go. 
It says it all right there. Let's listen some more. You know what I mean? The women don't like you. Right. Your feet stink. Right. You're sitting on the you're sitting on the couch all day. You don't got it. But the world don't like you. We're not supposed to be of the world. Love not. We're supposed to hate this world. Love not the world. Neither the things of the world. The love of the Father is not the love. Who, he who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him, in him. So does this guy even know what the hell he's saying? No, he doesn't. He's a brute. Now until he repents, he he repents. He's a brute. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He's just babbling. He's just a dude wearing a, a garment, trying to look like he came right off uh, the set of uh, King David and King Solomon, right? He uh, and just babbling. Okay, just wafting. <laughs> All right, <laughs> has a, uh, has no sense in his talk. Nothing edifying. Let's move on, man. Hold up. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so, you know, you get the picture. These are just gimmicks. And that's really what you're supposed to... See, this is what is meant in Malachi, where it, you should be able to discern between he that is serving the Yahweh Shem Yahshai and he that is serving not. Okay? Clearly, I'm telling you right now, these... Individuals here are not serving Yahweh Hashem Yahshua. The only person they're serving is themselves, their own vanity and conceit and deceit. Their own, they're, the only person they're serving is themselves, their own belly, like it says in the scriptures. All right. Okay, so hopefully you were edified. Next one.